Hello, everyone. This is a program of the Shaker Heights Public Library. My name is Cindy Maxey. I'm the Adult Services Manager. Uh, one of the things that the library does throughout the year is to uh, register folks to vote. Um, and we've been hearing a lot of questions from the community about particulars, um, just as we've got a major election coming up. And so um, I've invited Mike West, who is the outreach manager of the, uh, the Board of Cuyahoga County Board of Elections, to uh, meet with us today and tell us uh, about how to go about voting and to answer some questions that we've gotten here at the library. Uh, Mike has, uh, as the outreach manager, is in charge of public relations and media relations and also uh, voter education and community outreach. He has 18 years experience as a broadcast journalist. Uh, welcome, Mike. And I'm gonna just start by giving you the floor and asking you to walk us through the voting process this year. Well, good morning and thank you for having me. Uh, what's going on right now is we're reminding everybody that they need to make sure that they are registered at their current address. A lot of people move and they forget to update their address. So come election day, they wake up in the morning and go, wow, I have no idea where I'm supposed to vote. Uh, if that happens to you, uh, go to our website. You can just Google Cuyahoga County Board of Elections or type in 443 vote um, dot us. Um, and I'm, I'm going to break away for a second and tell people that our website really is a great one-stop shop for everything you need. So you can look up your voting information, you can type in your address and find your new place to vote if you've moved and didn't update your registration. But we hope that that doesn't happen to you. We hope that if you've moved, you've updated your registration, you can check that on our website or call 216-443-VOTE and you can follow the prompts and check your information that way. So the name of the game is if you're not registered, get registered and you can do that right at the library or you can do that online. Um, and then you'll get a card in the mail in the next couple of weeks with your new voting location. So that's the first thing to get squared away, that you're registered at your current address and you know exactly where you're gonna vote on election day. So that's really our educational push right now. Another thing we're doing, um, we imagined that we would promote voting by mail quite a bit before this election because we know there's people uh, right now, they don't like to travel. They don't wanna be places where there are crowds, but that seemed to take care of itself. Uh, we've got over 230,000 vote by mail ballot applications, and that is a record high of all time for the number of people who want to vote in this election uh, or any other presidential election. Anyway, so people uh, have gotten the idea that they wanna vote by mail. And it's a simple process. You can go to the library and get an application and then mail it to the board or drop it off at the board. You can go to our website and ask us to mail you a ballot application and that will come to you with a return envelope. If you do have a printer, you can print your application right off of your computer and fill it out and send it or drop it off to the board. Now in the past, uh, the biggest objection people had to voting by mail was that they were concerned that if they put it in the mail, um, that it might not get here on time or something would happen to it. Uh, it would fall between the post office delivery van seats or something. So we're telling people that um, once they get their ballot, they should drop it off here at the board and they can do that 24 seven or come in the building when we're open for business hours. So a uh, little recap, you're registered at your current address, you fill out a ballot application, you get it to the board as soon as possible. And by the way, the registration deadline is October 5th. So keep that in mind. And we begin mailing out ballots on October 6th. So if we have say 300,000 ballot applications that have been processed, uh, we'll start mailing those ballots on the 6th. 
So get your ballot application in early because we're trying to flatten the curve. We don't want to get a whole bunch of them, you know, thousands of them right before it's time to start mailing. We'd like to get those as far ahead of time as we can. Uh, when you get your ballot, um, if you get your application in early, you'll get it in uh, around the first week of October, toward the end of the week. Uh, vote it and return it to the board as soon as you can, because when it gets close to November 3rd, uh, then you've got to start worrying about the postmark deadline. If you're going to mail your ballot, that's perfectly fine. Just get it to the post office as soon as possible so it'll get postmarked uh, by the deadline, which is on or before November 2nd. And if you wake up election day and realize you forgot to mail it, you must bring it to the Board of Elections and drop it off. As of now, this is the only place that you can drop off your ballot. However, if you've been following the news, there is some talk about um, the Board of Elections, ours and others around the state that might be able to provide additional drop boxes, but the future is unknown. So for right now, we tell everybody, if you wanna physically drop off your ballot, the Board of Elections is the place to do that. Um, I can start with one question that we get a lot here, and I'm sure you get a lot at the library. You know, I keep getting more ballot applications in the mail and I already sent one in. Did something go wrong? Uh, the answer is no. I've gotten ballot applications from political parties, from AARP, uh, so a lot, and of course the Secretary of State. So if you've uh, completed one ballot application, you don't need to complete any others. Go on our website or call us and confirm that we have received your ballot application. And then all you got to do is sit back, relax, and wait until October 6th and when you start checking your mailbox for your ballot. So Mike, I um, submitted mine some time ago and I noticed that it was more than two weeks before the website confirmed that you had processed it. Um, how What's the, the time period currently for between something getting mailed and the application getting mailed? And I know you were furious, furiously processing them. Well, I think uh, things have gotten a lot better. What happened with this enormous amount of uh, ballot applications we received, we could only enter so many of them into our system at a time. So we did have a backlog. I believe we're catching up now. So probably four or five days uh, after you submit it should be about right. What happens is when we get your application, we have to confirm that all the information is correct and do a signature comparison and things like that. And once it goes into our database, that's linked to our website. And that's when you can check to confirm we've received your ballot. Okay. And I should also say, uh, this was probably going to be a question. If, if you forget to fill something out on your ballot application, they will send you a new one and tell you what you did wrong. So uh, we work, and that's another really good reason to get your application in early. Because if you do something wrong, we have plenty of time to correct it and make sure that you'll be all set to get your ballot. Great, great. Um, there, we were getting instructions here at the library in doing voter outreach to have people go ahead and fill out a voter registration and submit their ballot, their um, vote by mail application at the same time. And I heard from some people who were very concerned that those two items would get separated and that their vote by mail application would get rejected because the registration had not yet been processed. Um, how does that work if, when those two things arrive at the, uh, at the Board of Elections together? Uh, normally it's not a problem. Uh, we keep up with our registrations uh, very well. So a, a registration card is gonna get entered into the system faster than a vote by mail ballot application. But if you're concerned about that, um, you know, you can always submit your registration card and then wait a few days and submit your ballot application. Okay. But usually um, that's not a problem. The worst thing that could happen if 
your application is entered before the registration is they would mail you another application and by the time you got that you'd be in the system but <laughs> you have to fill out another one and send it in okay so i think that's that's probably the worst thing that could happen but normally that's not a problem we do that all the time people register or update their registration and put the ballot application in at the same time okay great um, what part of my voter registration or my vote by mail application is public record? If I give you my uh, email address or my phone number, and those are optional, but um, will those get published, uh, given to anybody for, uh, who asked for the voter rolls? No, those are, that information is redacted. If somebody were to come in here and demand to look at ballot applications because they're public record, we'd have to show them but only your name and address. We wouldn't, we don't share birthdays or other communications information that would be redacted. And this actually came up a couple of weeks ago and I asked the manager of our uh, absentee department about it. And he says in his 20 years here, nobody's ever come in to look at ballot applications. Now people do need to know that their name and what's called voter history is available to the public. Um, if you go on the website, you can look at a list of 850,000 people. And this is how the campaigners find out how to mail you those nice glossy postcards that we get <laughs> by the boatload um, when it gets closer to the election. So yeah, your, you your name and address is out there. Yeah, close and, what that means we're not talking about who I voted for in the past. Correct. It just says whether you're a Democrat, Republican, Green Party, Libertarian, or nonpartisan voter, which most people refer to as independent. And it, it shows whether you voted in an election. It doesn't say how you voted. Nobody knows that. That's always a secret. Um, so what happens is people sort that information. Uh, campaigners want to know who votes every time and the people that don't vote very much. And like anything else in today's modern world, everything gets sliced, diced and analyzed and there's really nothing we can do about it. Okay. Now I've heard that people in some other states have been getting robocalls telling them that if they vote by mail, their application is going to be run through police databases to search for warrants or given to credit card companies for uh, debt collection or even put on mandatory vaccine lists. Uh, any truth to that? that? The truth is those calls have gone out and it's very concerning because we got a few reports of people around here getting those phone calls. And uh, it's pretty despicable. Um, the secretaries of state in our state and others know about it because I was reading in the news that there's two states where uh, their attorney generals are trying to track down the people that are putting out this erroneous information. So if you get a robocall like that, just delete it. It doesn't, it doesn't mean a thing. It's meant to scare people. And if you get scared, then the scammers win. Okay. Um, so somebody expressed to me a concern that she registered to vote like 30 years ago. And now she's sending in a vote by mail application and planning to vote by mail. And her signature doesn't look like it did 30 years ago. Uh, how closely are signatures uh, compared? And do I need to worry about my signature being thrown out because it's changed over the years? Well, my advice to anyone, and I know I registered to vote when I moved here 20 years ago, and I sign slightly different, but there are some characteristics um, that have not changed. So I'm not gonna worry about it. However, if there's some physical changes that I've experienced, or I haven't registered since 1956, it's a good idea to come to the library and fill out a new voter registration card. Now, when they get that, say you don't do that and they sit down and and they they look for you know they look for characteristics that haven't changed over the years these guys are regular handwriting experts you can imagine all the sloppily written 
voter registration cards we get in and is that a six or an eight you know so they're they're pretty good at figuring this stuff out but they're going to look at that and they'll say okay all this information matches and we see very similar characteristics even though it, it looks different um but it, worst case scenario they go wow <clears throat> everything's right on target but the signature is way off um they're going to send you another ballot application in the mail and a letter that uh tells you why you're getting it so you know it's good advice for everybody if it's been a long time since you registered go ahead now while we've got relatively plenty of time mm -hmm. um to fill out a new registration card there's no harm in updating your signature okay great um so we're hearing a lot about the post office being behind in delivering mail and when do you recommend getting, you said as early as possible, getting those uh, applications mailed and then returning the ballots. Uh, besides getting the, those ballots uh, postmarked correctly, um, what happens if it's in the mail for two weeks after election day? Well, here is, let's, for example, it's the day before the election and you take it to the post office and you hand it to the clerk and say, please make sure this gets canceled today and dated and they do that. Mm -hmm. Then the ballot has 10 days to arrive. If it arrives after those 10 days, it can't be counted. There's a reason for that and I'll get to that in a minute. Um, but chances are, even on a really bad week, the post office is gonna, isn't going to take more than 10 days to get that ballot to us. But here's something else that's interesting. Every once in a while, an envelope will go through the system and it won't be postmarked. Okay, Have you ever gotten a letter and go, wow, they didn't cancel this stamp. Maybe I can just peel it off and use it on another letter. You know? because it comes through untouched. If that happens, and it does sometimes, and we get the ballot before election day, or on or before election day, it's gonna be fine. But if it gets to us without a postmark after election day, mm -hmm. we have no proof that it was mailed by November 2nd. So that's another reason to get that uh, ballot in the mail as soon as you can, instead of waiting until the last minute. Um, so what about other alternatives to voting this year besides vote by mail? Well, if people want the experience of going and getting a ballot and filling it out in a booth, and to a lot of people that's important. They really feel like they voted when they've done that. Mm -hmm. uh, we begin early voting on October 6th, and we will start with extended hours, and those hours during the week, uh, it starts from eight to five for a couple of weeks. And then the last week it's eight in the morning till seven o'clock at night. And we have voting on Saturday and Sunday, the two weekends before the election. So it's a good way to come down and vote on your schedule. At the Board of Elections downtown. At, at the Board of Elections downtown here at 30th and Euclid. So, you know, bring the whole family down on a Saturday afternoon or a Sunday morning or when whenever you'd like to come. Uh, and it's going to be a very uh, sanitized environment. So I'll get into that briefly. Um, here we're going to do a little health screening as people come in to vote early. Everybody will be six feet apart when they stand in line. Um, our workers will have masks and shields and we ask that early voters wear masks. And there's people that their only job is to walk around and wipe down surfaces that voters have touched. And uh, when you leave, you can, uh, you can take the pen with you. And that'll be the same way on election day. So if, if you come down, the early voting experience will be like the election day experience. And there'll be things like, you know, the doors will be pop, propped open so that people don't have to touch any door handles. Um, so voting early is a great way to vote. The early voting hours are on our website. And we do plan to have election day voting. Uh, until we hear different, it, it should, or 
if we hear different, and I don't think we will. I think we're, we're far enough down the road. Everything's in place. Um, we know how we're going to spread out all of the voting booths and all of the scanners. The poll workers will be six feet apart. It'll be safer to vote than it will to go to the grocery store, frankly. And um, how are you doing with recruiting poll workers? Do you still need poll workers? We, we always need poll workers. So um, if anybody wants to be a poll worker, they can apply online. And they are, poll workers are always in demand because we know that we need to hire extra poll workers so that we have more than enough. Mm -hmm. And if we do reach our 5,000 poll worker mark, we'll keep hiring and some people will be standbys. And that means you might be a standby poll worker and if you don't get called into work, you still get a small stipend. But uh, we have higher uh, payment this time around because of the pandemic. Poll workers can earn up to $275 for a day's work. So that's pretty good. Yeah. We're also looking for temporary election officials that do things like help us open the thousands of ballot applications we get and pretty soon they'll help us open ballots and process things. So there's, there's a lot to do down here. And if you want to work something that feels like a regular job, you can apply to be a temporary um, election official. And that's $8.50 an hour. And it's mostly Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 4.30 work. So that's a, if somebody's looking for something to do, uh, it's a great way to be part of democracy and make a little extra money. Wonderful. Wonderful. Uh, what happens if I request a vote by mail application and then decide that I want the full experience and I either go for um, uh, early voting or I show up at my poll on election day? If you request a ballot, it's in our system. So if you come to vote early and you check in, they'll say, well, it, it looks like we've mailed you a ballot. And you say, well, I'm not gonna use it. I'm gonna vote right now. They'll go, they'll cancel the ballot they've mailed you and they'll give you a ballot and you can vote it. And when you're done, you can put it in the scanner and you're done. Now, I suggest for the people that change their mind, if they know early enough, um, that, that they do it that way because what happens if you go to vote on election day at your polling place, they're going to say, well, we see that you've, we've mailed you a ballot. Here's another ballot. You can vote it. And when you're done, you put it in a provisional envelope and you have to fill out all the information on that provisional envelope. And that will get set aside for at least 10 days. Because remember, we talked about the 10 days that ballots have to arrive at the board. Mm -hmm. Well, the, 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 the second reason for that is if you were to mail your ballot in and then go to vote on election day, we have to keep that separated because uh, anything that comes in after 10 days is, is not valid. So there's no way um, that you're going to be able to vote twice. Mm -hmm. So once we see the 10 days has gone by, you really did throw your ballot in the garbage, and then we can count, count your vote. Okay, thank you. Um, and so, um, you know, there's a lot of older folks in my uh, church who do not like to drive downtown. Uh, if I got their ballots, I could bring them down to the Board of Elections and put them in the drop box, right? No, and we, we've heard that a lot. There's a lot of good-hearted people with sincere good intentions that would like to help their friends and neighbors by bringing their ballots to the board. Uh, only family members can do that. But we are encouraging people, if they want to help out in that way, uh, you know, put your friend in the car, in the back seat, if you don't want to get too close. Uh, <laughs> And they can, and you can take them down to the board and they can put it in the ballot drop box here. So, you know, family members can handle ballots for the whole family. Um, 
but you, you can't give it to friends or neighbors or you can um, get yourself in some hot water. Okay, thank you. Um, so the primary this year was a pretty messy as things kept changing, uh, not because of the Board of Elections, but because of the pandemic. Um, and I, you've mentioned already that there's uh, a lot of question about, say, how many drop boxes are going to be and where they're going to be and uh, court cases. Uh, how do people keep up with late breaking changes? Well, the, we got the drop box question that's floating around out there and we've still got the postage paid for the ballot floating around. Um, all I can say is, uh, we have a little time. The ballot drop boxes, if approved, would surface starting on October 13th. And I guarantee you, if you even watch a little bit of news, um, if this ballot drop box decision uh, comes down and, and they're allowed, uh, everybody's gonna hear about it. That's gonna be huge. That's gonna be very big news. Um, and we'll be publicizing where they are if, if we end up being allowed to, to set these up. And as far as postage, uh, when you get your ballot, there'll be instructions on how much postage it needs, and that can vary. You might have a ballot that's one page, and somebody in another city might have one that's four pages. So the weight of the, of the package will dictate how much postage, but we will put that in with the instructions. And this is probably a good time to remind people that when they do vote their ballot and fold it up and put it in the ID security envelope and lick it and seal it, that they should, you know, take a deep breath, sit down at their table and very carefully go over all of the information on there. Some common mistakes, people forget to sign it, People put the today's date where they're supposed to put their birthday, um, little things like that. So that's the time to stop, slow down, and very carefully fill out the ID envelope, put it in the outer envelope, and those are clearly marked so the post office knows there's a ballot in there and to, to handle it with care. Um, some common mistakes, some people don't bother with the ID envelope and then we get a ballot in the mail without an ID envelope and we can't do anything with that. So um, it's not funny, but it is interesting that people find all kinds of ways to make mistakes. We know it's not intentional and some folks are, you know, people do the best they can, but, but that's a crucial time to really sit down and uh, make sure you concentrate on what you're doing. We want every ballot to count. Um, anything else that uh, you want to let people know so that voting goes smoothly and people are able to participate in the democratic process? Well, um, the best thing to do is make your voting plan. Whatever that is, make it. You know, if you're going to vote on election day, you know, decide, are you going to get up and eat breakfast and go vote? Or if you're at, at home, are you going to go you know, right after you have lunch? Are you gonna go right after work? Um, you know, kind of make a plan so that the day doesn't get away from you and you go, oh no, it's 7.30, I'm too late. Or if you're gonna vote by mail, make your plan to get the application in early. And uh, very soon, if not now, there, we have sample ballots on our website. So people can look up what their ballot's going to look like ahead of time. So you can study the candidates and issues uh, well ahead of getting your ballot, make some notes. And that way, when the big day comes and your ballot arrives in the mail, uh, you'll be able to sit down, vote it the way you want it, and get it right back to us, whether in the mail or by dropping it off. So um, that's probably my best advice. And if, and if you have questions, call the board or see if you can find an answer on our website. So be a good scout and be prepared and you'll be just fine. Give us again, please, your address at the Board of Elections. 2925 Euclid Avenue. Okay. Um, 
That, that was it. That was it. <laughs> All right. Um, I would also add that um, if there are questions, the library, our reference librarians are more than happy and uh, prepared to answer questions. We can look up people's voter registration to make sure that everything's correct. Um, we're happy to do that. You can call the library 99, excuse me, 216-991-2030. Um, and thank you very much, Mike. Happy to do it. And if you get a lot more questions, we can do it again. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye-bye.